In this video, I'm going to go through a chi-squared test for independence, also called cross taps uh, for marking. Um, and so it's a type of hypothesis test we're going to do. And we do it when we want to tell if there's some sort of dependence between um, groups, if you will. Um, okay, so here's the setup. Analysts who work on a popular game called Fortnite um, are trying to determine who they should target their in-app purchases to. In particular, they want to promote a premium add-on pack for users or to users. They're wondering if the level um, that the player is at in the app might influence their likelihood of purchasing an add-on pack. So let's see this table here. No, this is actually fake data, but let's have a look at it. Let's say this was the case where we have the levels for these players as bronze, silver, or gold or higher. And then we're wondering, did they or did they not purchase the add-on pack when it was shown to them? So let's say these analysts are having um, 320 people at random selected. And uh, when they're playing the game, this add-on pack is suggested to them as a purchase at some point. Out of the bronze players, 60 of them purchased the add-on out of the 100. For silver, 67 out of the 130 purchased the add-on. And for gold or higher, 49 out of the 90 purchased the add-on. So what does that really mean? Does it mean anything? Does it point to any of the groups being significantly different than the others? Is there a difference? Um, so let's go start testing this. Um, you can imagine this type of, like being able to test if there's this dependence between the groups is really useful. Um, so yeah, let's go have a look at how we do this. So first thing I'm going to do is truly is to define my null and alternative hypotheses. They're here listed already. Um, look in the video description for the link to um, where to download this Excel file. So our null hypothesis, we're going to set it as the following. We're going to say that um, purchasing the add-on is really independent of a player's level. So we can even trim this up more if we want. Purchasing the add-on pack is independent of the player's level. And let's just trim this one down a little bit too. Our alternate or alternative hypothesis is that purchasing the add-on is dependent on the player's level. Okay, beautiful. Um, so we have independent for H naught, dependent for HA, that there is a dependence. So what this is trying to tell us if we reject the null, and if we're left with the alternative, it's telling us that the level does affect whether or not they purchase the add-on. Okay, so first thing we do is go assume always that H not is true. So it's kind of not being like not nothing's happening or it's not, it's kind of the opposite of what we um, want to prove. So let's assume that there's no dependence between the two. So then it doesn't, um, like the proportion of people who purchase the add-on should be the same throughout all the groups. What we do is we go get those expected values if they are truly the same. And this is one way of doing it. So you take your row total times your column total divided by your grand total. So your row total and we're going to lock the E. Um, we want to stay in this column times the column total. So then you go down to the 176, grab that, and then lock the 15 there. Divide by the 320, lock um, the E and the 15 there. That's actually getting a ratio. So um, we have 100 out of 320 players who are at the bronze level. So when we take 100 over 320, that gives us the percentage of bronze players. 
we have 176 out of the 320 who purchased the add-on. If we go and times by the 176, this gives us the number of players we would expect to purchase the add-on if you have the same uh, purchase rate between all the different groups. Now, once you've done this calculation, once you just pull it across and down, if you locked the right values, so you lock row, or sorry, column E, so you lock the E here, you lock row 15, so you lock the 15, and then divide by, and then this value, you lock it the whole way through, because you always want to divide by that grand total. So those are our expected values, or what we would expect to get if there was no difference in the purchasing between the different levels. Keeping going. Now, um, next thing to go do is get our test result. This is where we take a difference between our observed and expected, square that, divide by the expected, and sum all of those up. So let's have a look here in our table. I'm going to grab my observed, that's really like my actual value, and I minus from that my expected value, and I do them, um, I do the um, corresponding ones, if you will. So 60 gets compared to the 55, close that bracket, and then square it. So power of 2 gives me the top piece. And then divide by the expected, which is that 55. I don't need to lock anything there. Now I can just pull that down and across. And those are all of my chi-squared test results, which I then need to go sum up. I can use an equal sum call. I'm going to sum up across the rows. Now I don't have to do this, but I might as well. I'm also just summing down the columns like that. And that very last one here, this is my overall test result. That is chi-squared test. That's the sum of all of these differences squared. Okay, next is my degrees of freedom. This is where I take my number of rows minus one times my number of columns minus one. So I have one, two, three rows of actual data. Don't count the headers, don't count the totals, just look at how many rows of actual data you have. So in this case, three and minus one from that for the degrees of freedom, and then times by the number of columns minus one. So I have two columns, so minus one from that, and that gives me two. Beautiful. Last is to go get my p-value, and here I use a chi-squared.dist.write. We will always use that in our cases. We're always going to be, when we're doing this type of test, we're using a chi-squared distribution. Um, okay, and we're going to go get the t-score first, or sorry, the chi-squared score first, that test statistic, and then comma, the degrees of freedom. And that gives me a p-value. Let me just copy this formula too. That gives me a very small, or sorry, very large p-value. What does this mean? Well, that is way above the 5%. So our decision ends up being the following. That we fail to reject H0. We do not reject H0 because the p-value is greater than the level of significance. So what is our conclusion? Well, since we did not reject H0, we say that there is not enough evidence to conclude that whether or not someone purchases the add-on pack 
depends on the player's level in the game. So the player's level should not affect whether or not they make a purchase. Um, so the player's levels shouldn't really be used to decide who to target in this example. All right, that concludes this example of the chi-squared test for independence, which is also called crosstabs. Thanks for watching.